Spanish dancer with raven black hair. What a pity she was dying and she required so much care. Tuberculosis was wasting her, taking her life. Death would capture her Halloween night. Our man on guitar is Key West author Ben Harrison, who's written a book about Florida's weirdest love story. <laughs> Hi, Ben. Hey, Ben. How are, How are you? you? Look like you could use a few backup singers. Sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so why are we here in this graveyard? Oh, we're just hanging around here singing about a guy that took a dead girl from her crypt. <laughs> <laughs> and why would someone want to do that? He loved her. He loved her very, very much. February 1926, Carl Tonsler, a.k.a. Count Carl von Kossel, leaves his wife and daughters behind in Germany to start a new life in America. He arrives in Key West, Florida, and gets a job at a hospital as an x-ray technician. That's where he meets the woman of his dreams, a pretty patient named Elena Hoyos. Elena is quite beautiful, and quite a bit younger, less than half the age of the 50-year-old Count. And she's dying of tuberculosis, which in the 1920s is the second most common cause of death in America. But that doesn't seem to bother the Count. He falls madly in love. So begins quite an unusual courtship. First, the Count offers gifts. Then, he even attempts to cure Elena's tuberculosis. But in the 1920s, TB remains untreatable. Antibiotics to cure the disease will not be available until 1944. But that doesn't stop Von Kassel from trying his own unconventional remedies. He tried all of these things to cure her. He, he really took her under his wing and he invented these Frankensteinish electrical contraptions and just shocked the hell out of her, basically. In spite of Von Kassel's best efforts, Elena gets even sicker until she finally dies on October 31st, Halloween 1931. This event pushes the Count over the edge. He decides that if he can't have her in life, well, then he'll have her in death. He paid for the funeral, he paid for the plot, and they buried her, but he was perpetually in motion for his beloved Elena and he could not stand the thought of her being harmed by the groundwater. The Count fears Elena's corpse might decompose too quickly if water seeps into her coffin, so he exhumes her in order to create a safer, more ornate resting place. So he talked the family and the state into disinterring her, and she went back to the funeral home while he built this very elaborate mausoleum. It's a grand monument to undying love, where Elena is once more put to rest. But not for long. Okay, so Ben, at this point in the story, Elena's already been buried twice in this cemetery, right? Yes. Her original burial, and then she was uh, disinterred and put into a mausoleum here. Can you show us where that is? Yes, I can. This is the place. This is where it all happened, huh, Ben? Yes, it is. But this isn't the original mausoleum, is no, it? No, it's not. What are some of the things that Count von Kossel used to do here in the graveyard with Elena? I think he basically came here in the evenings and just sat with her inside this tiny mausoleum until it finally got to him. Oh, well, is this, this is the spot where he thought she was um, singing to him, though, yes, right? Yes, yes. And asking him to take her away? Yes. Please rescue me from this. Unfortunately, the Count's idea of gallantry is actually a crime called grave robbery. Either way, the Count makes off like a bandit with Elena's corpse. Ben, I gotta say, it's pretty hot here in the Key West Cemetery, and I can only imagine that it must be like an oven inside one of these uh, mausoleums. What kind of condition was Elena in after two years when the Count took her away? I'm sure she was in terrible condition. So where did he take her? Well, he first, he had a hard time getting her over the fence because it was so heavy. <laughs> and uh, it actually fell back down on him and some awful liquid was leaking onto him. And he was very discouraged, but with superhuman strength, managed to get up and get the casket over the fence. So even the essence of Elena dripping all over him wasn't enough to uh, deter his undying love. All day Elena. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is devotion, I must yeah. say. Count von Kossel's dedication doesn't end there. 
After finally carrying his stinky, dead, and unwilling bride across the threshold, the Count goes to work at resurrecting her. Now mind you, she's been dead for two years, so by now I'd say her corpse is in grave condition. No pun intended. Well, to restore her beauty, first he binds her delicate bones together with piano wire. Then he reconstructs her face with silk, wax, and a pair of brand new glass eyes. Next, he adds a wig made from Elena's actual hair. But the Count has one more trick up his sleeve. To bring Elena's corpse back to life once again, he tries his Frankensteinish technique, electrotherapy. But alas, Elena remains dead. Although that doesn't stop the Count from taking his love to the next level. You don't mean necro... Let them figure it out. Count Carl von Kossel of Key West, Florida, isn't one to let the dead rest in peace. During the two years that his beloved Elena Oyos is dead, von Kossel kidnaps her corpse, tries to electrically jolt it back to life, and now he begins a most unnatural union with her remains. Key West author Ben Harrison enlightens us with the gruesome details. This wasn't really an effigy in the sense that um, one would um, worship it. I mean, he did more than just worship this corpse, didn't he? Yes, he did. He loved her. In how many ways? I'd say... <laughs> <laughs> every which way but, every which way but loose. <laughs> For seven years, the Count and his corpse enjoy a macabre marriage until rumors spread and Elena's family confronts Von Kossel. You can imagine the, the poor sister going in and seeing her sister there, reconstructed. What's done is done and what I've done is right. So finally, on October 5th, 1940, the jig is up. The Count's arrested and taken to jail. Public interest in the case is so overwhelming that the local funeral home puts Elena's corpse on display. 6,000 people, including these school children, view the body over three days. Meanwhile, back in jail, the Count actually receives kind notes of compassion. So the people of Key West and uh, elsewhere, I guess, were kind of sympathetic. To very, them. very sympathetic. But did they know, did they realize that he was had been having sex with this corpse or did they no, just think that no that didn't come out for 20 years the reason nobody knew for 20 years is the counts um behavior was so unspeakable that the medical examiner decided to keep it unspoken what's even more mind-boggling is the count gets off scot-free because the statute of limitations for grave robbery has by then elapsed Upon release, the Count asks to get Elena's corpse back and is promptly run out of town. He settles elsewhere in Florida, but isn't content to spend time with the living. So, he does what he'd already done so well. He reconstructs Elena, this time out of plaster and wax. And then he even invites tourists to take a horrifying look. But unfortunately, this effigy isn't real enough to heal the Count's broken heart. In July 1952, he at last joins Elena in her world. If you visit Key West today and look for Elena Oyo's final resting place, you won't find it. That's because she was finally buried in secret while the Count was in jail. Third time's a charm. Hmm. Well, you don't mind if we poke around a little bit, do you? Not at all. Okay, thanks a lot. Thanks. Where are they buried, Elena?